So I've had quite a lot of uh, requests recently um, asking me how you can import uh, materials into the GPUDM materials database. Specifically, people want to import, import refractive indices and um, absorption data. And there's actually a section in the manual describing how to do this. So it's, it says the materials database and adding in materials. Um, it's worth reading this. Um, it, show, it tells you how to do it manually, but it's a little bit compli complicated, and I think people have been stumbling on this. So I've added a new tool in the model to build to, to basically help you do this in a few clicks. So this one I'm going to demonstrate here. So I'm doing this on Linux just because I've got a Linux computer to hand, but you can do this on this will work on Windows just just the same. So we start the model. Um, let's go to the materials database first and have a look around that. So we go to the database tab, the materials database, and here I've split the materials database up into blends, small molecules, polymers, oxides, and sort of various materials. Of note, and um, there's these two files here. One's called pvlighthouse.com, and one's called refractiveindex.info. Um, PV Lighthouse, an Australian um, database of materials for specifically solar energy harvesting, um, and refractiveindex.info is a large. Um, database from refractive index or info with various materials in it and it's split up into glass other main organic there's all types of materials in here sort of you know and anything you can imagine um, if you look in the main tab for example and I don't know say gallium nitride um, it's got a material here that's the name of the author double click on it it'll give you absorption refractive index for that but if your material you're interested in isn't in here then you'd have to add your own material to the database um, to do this you click on uh, add new material um, and then you, you give a name so let's pretend we don't have p3htpcm in our database we'll call it new p3htpcbm then we'll click OK and this will make a new material so you can put this wherever you want in the database so let's double click on this and it's given us to start with absorption of zero and a refractive index of one so this is basically air so we need to somehow import data and make this a bit more realistic for this material so I've gone and found on the internet um, the absorption refractive index already for p 3 ht PCBM. Now, you might get this data from your own experiments, you might take it from a paper, um, you know, they might take it, take it from a different database I don't have in the model. You can get this data from anywhere you want. So, here I've got two files. One's got the absorption, one's got refractive index in it. So, let's open the absorption file and have a look. So, this has got effectively absorption in, sorry, wavelength. This column's wavelength, this column's absorption. This is in meters, and this is in meters to minus one. Um, it's very important to um, know exactly what units you're dealing with because um, you, you don't want to muddle it up because that can cause problems later. And let's look at the file N for refractive index. And in here, I've stored wavelength and the refractive index. So it's about you know, 1, 1 1.5, 1 1.2. 1 um, these are just text files. They're nothing clever. There's you know, just simple ASCII text files. So let's import these files into the model using the import button. So we click on the absorption tab, um, click import. I've stored the files on my desktop, so I'll go to the desktop and I'll open the file alpha.dat. So on the left hand side, this is what's in this file alpha.dat. On the right hand side is what's going to be written to the model. So we've got two boxes here. This box must be set to whatever um, quantity and units the left hand column is here. So I'm going to set this to wavelength in meters. And this box and this box here has, has to be set to whatever is in this column here and the correct units. So I'm going to set this to um, absorption meters to the minus one. Now it's very important to note that you can import whatever data you want to the model. So it can be whatever units you want. It can be in centimeters. It can be in meters. It can be in you know uh, angstroms. Whatever you want can be imported from the left hand side. But when it's in the right hand side here. This has to be an SI unit, so everything that actually goes into the model has to be SI units. So this wavelength has to be SI, and this absorption has to be SI. So everything has to be in meters, kilograms, um, amps. There can't be, uh, you're not allowed uh, centimeters to be imported into the model. You're not allowed uh, angstroms, things like that. So whatever units you want on the left-hand side, but once it's on the right-hand side, everything has to be in meters. So then we click uh, Import Data. And the absorption has been uh, imported into the model. Um, there's something funny going on with the scale here. I'm not. There's two zeros missing. I'm not quite sure what, why that is. It's, I think it's a plotting problem. I'll have a look at that later. Then we move on to refractive index. Um, we'll go import data. So I've got the refractive index stored in n.dat. So we'll open that. 
um, here is uh, this is wavelength in meters, this is refractive index in arbitrary units. So we'll select wavelength in meters, um, refractive index, in, sorry, refractive index in arbitrary units. And if we want to just check the data, same before we do anything, we'll just click plot. And that looks vaguely sane to me. Then we'll click import data. So we've now got absorption and refractive index imported in the model. Final thing to do is being set up this tab here. So this has got color. Um, we can sort of set a color um, for the material so when it appears in the interface it'll look like this. Or P3 to PCM is reddish, so we'll select that. Uh, material type it's organic. Um, this is just the transparency of the material um, when it's actually shown in that 3D diagram underneath. Uh, it says change logs, so we can just put um, material added by rod. Or you can put the date or whatever you want there. So that's the material set up basically. So we close that. And then it's there, so it's sort of basically stored in the database. So if we now want to do a simulation with our um, new material, we go to our layer editor, select the layer we want to we want to swap it for. So we've actually already got P3HT PCPM in the model under blend stroke P3HT PCM, but we'll select our new material, and here it is, new P3HT PCPM. Select OK. It's changed to new P3HT PCPM. We'll just change this label here, new P3HT PCPM. And then let's perform an optical simulation using the optical simulation button. We'll click run. So there's our material. Click run. And it's done it. And we can look at the photons absorbed, or the photon distribution of the device, photons absorbed, and whatever you want. So this has basically imported this material into the model, and we're now using it to perform simulations. That is, in principle, it. Um, what I would say is if you if you do so where's the database if you do import lots of new and exciting materials um, into the model um, do consider sending me uh, a uh, a copy of them so I can also include them in the model if, if you'd like to so that's it um, I hope you enjoy it thank you very much